In the wild highlands and war-torn plains of Central Asia, lie tantalizing traces of the ancient world. Here 2,300 years ago, Alexander the Great became the first European to rule the East. In an epic campaign, the ancient Greeks crushed the Persian Empire. It was a turning point in human history. Along the banks of the mighty Oxus River, Alexander discovered a highly developed Eastern civilization. My name is David Adams. I'm a photojournalist, and I want to explore the footprints of this ancient world. Today, almost entirely erased. This is my quest for Alexander's lost world. Inspired by heroic tales of Eastern lands, Alexander forged new frontiers for the ancient Greek Empire. His army campaigned along the river Oxus to capture cities governed by their Persian rivals. Two and a half thousand years ago, the cities of the Oxus made up an incredible civilization. They were the equal of anywhere else on Earth. But then, that would all be changed by one man. Here, they call him the Devil, Ixander. We know him as Alexander the Great. And at the head of a huge army, in just a few years, he would change this civilization forever. Today in modern Afghanistan, the cities that Alexander found are all but lost. But traces of fortresses, settlements, and age-old infrastructure still survive. Echoes of a culture that once thrived here. I want to find the fabled capital occupied by Alexander, the ancient city of Bactra. This is the heavily patrolled border of Afghanistan and Turkmenistan, one of the most remote and little used borders on Earth. Yeah. Getting permission to film here was never going to happen. So my cameraman, Greg, decides to accidentally leave his camera on. There's a two kilometre stretch of no man's land before you reach the Afghan border post and neither side provides transport. So we find a truck driver who for a fee agrees to take us across. This electrified fence encloses a minefield. It stretches for more than 800 kilometers along the border. And every 15 or 20 kilometers, there's a defense post. Visitors are not welcome here. Almost no Westerners cross this border. Taliban insurgency has been on the rise in northern Afghanistan. Security is tight and border guards are edgy. At the midway point, we're stopped and called over by the Afghan guard on duty. Hello. This camera's all Take. Look here. Greg makes out like he's just cleaning the camera lens. Are you, are you from in Afghanistan? Kabul? The guard I want to The question is, is the guard going to let us in or is he going to turn us back? Oh, good. Then we realize he's called for a vehicle. <laughs> Thank you very much. The guard 
drives us out of no man's land to the Afghan border post. Uh, documentary. We've reached the Afghan side, Just put it up there, but it's not over yet. The last step is to pass the customs check. We've just crossed over into Afghanistan. In ancient times, this was another world. The land of Bactria, the greatest kingdom ever to rise along the river Oxus. Like Alexander, I want to find the capital. The fabled city of Bactra. For Alexander, taking control of Bactra was of major strategic importance in his fight against the Persian Empire. But to date, archaeologists have found no absolute proof of its location. So, where is the ancient capital that Alexander and the Greeks knew as the mother of all cities? We're heading into the Afghan wilderness. Out here, roadblocks and hijackings are all too common. Ravaged by war, this region has been off limits for historians and archaeologists for decades. Westerners are a target, and so I've come with as small a crew as possible. Our driver Habib and our guide Reza have spent the last few years dodging bullets trying to document the ancient sites around here. We travel in daylight at full speed and don't stop for anything. We make it into the relative safety of Andhoy, one of the oldest centers of trade in Central Asia. There's no tourism out here, but luckily, Reza knows a bloke who owns a tea house, our sanctuary for the night. Yeah. That's great. Cheers. Come <laughs> I've come to Ant Hoy because I want to explore the bazaar. This part of Afghanistan has always been famous for trade in commodities like wool and lambskin. And today, nothing's changed. Well, this is the market of Anhoi. It's one of the most famous in the world because it's basically intact. It hasn't changed probably in thousands of years. And people have been trading here and buying and selling grapes for that long. But the main thing it's known for is carpets. The Turkmen-style carpets made here are some of the finest in the world. The craftsmen in workshops like this one are continuing a tradition that's been passed down for generations. And there's a clue to the ancient city of Bactra woven into these carpets. Reza tells me that they're much more than just antique rugs. 
If you look closely, you can see that they're living pictographs of ancient fortifications. So is this, is this based on the design of castles and citadels, these designs? Yes, sometimes, because it's really old and sometimes it's copied from the castle. And the old people is, remember, remember the, for example, the castle or the kings or other, other very big uh, building. So they're copying, yeah. Wow. Here is a revealing connection to our search for Bactra. Since the earliest of times, the Bactrian Empire was known as the land of a thousand cities. The geometric patterns in these carpets reflect the heavily fortified cities of Bactria. The trouble is, they're so stylized, it's hard to get a real indication of what one particular city actually looked like. That's lovely, huh? Look at that. Yeah. Okay, I say 180. Thank you very much. It's not only the carpets, that connect us to ancient Bactra. If you want to look into the face of an ancient Bactrian, look no further. Today, the Turkmen and the Uzbeks are ethnic minorities. But in essence, they're the same people. Northern Afghanistan is a patchwork of cultures that often don't see eye to eye but they do have one great thing in common, their ancient past. I want to find out more about the defenses Alexander came up against when he invaded this ancient realm. We've come from the Afghan border to Andhoy, and now we're heading for an archaeological site called Emesh Tepe, one of the great perimeter fortresses of Bactria. This has been frontier territory since ancient times. Even today, Emesh Tepe is a commanding vantage point in the arid borderlands between modern Afghanistan and Turkmenistan. Although there are no obvious ruins here today, this was once an imposing fortified town. Built by the Persians soon after they conquered Bactria, around 500 BC. That's almost 200 years before Alexander arrived. Well, I know this place looks a little bit like a football stadium after a sandstorm. So what we're gonna do is try and bring it to life with a few tricks of photography and a little bit of computer work to show you what this was like about two and a half thousand years ago. It's not until you actually get down into it that you get an idea of its scale. Almost two kilometers in circumference. But what's extraordinary is because of their location, very few of these citadels have ever been explored. we're attempting to do with this marvellous Italian invention here is to actually take three, 360 degrees of photographs and there's a little notch down here which is marked in all the different points of the compass and so what we do is click it around and take a photograph each time and then this little spirit level here which uh, Razor is going to monitor so it doesn't move is hopefully going to keep the pole really straight so we zip it round in a circle and then hopefully you'll be able to see this at 360 degrees I'll tell you right the big realisation for me is that this part of Afghanistan was far from a remote backwater.
two and a half thousand years ago, it was part of an advanced civilization, home to a community of thousands of Bactrians and Persians. Protected by its mighty walls and impregnable citadel. Emesh Tepe was just one of a series of fortresses that made up a state-of-the-art defense system, earning Bactria a reputation as the land of a thousand cities. And like Alexander and his 30,000 strong army, I want to find the Bactrian capital. Today, the ruins of the city of Bactra are thought to be near the modern town of Bork. And that's a five hour drive away. By the time Alexander reached the Valley of the Oxus, he'd won a series of decisive victories against his Persian enemy. And instead of fighting Alexander, the local Bactrians submitted to his rule. We're trying to avoid unplanned stops, but we've still got to eat. Habib has brought us to one of his favorite spots. Mm. Well, this is your typical chai hammer or restaurant. And in the middle of the day, everybody stops and they come to these different places. They're all over the place. The ancient Greeks were renowned for their hospitality, a principle they called xenia. Here, Alexander would have found that just like Greece, it was usual for locals to take care of travelers, provide them with a place to sleep and enough food to eat. The food here is fantastic. You've got fresh onion and tomato, You've got lovely rice and meat, soups, and then fantastic Afghan bread, which is delicious hot. And um, it's a really nice environment all the time. So it's, uh, it's really the way to eat in Afghanistan. Finally, we make it safely into Bork. The ruined citadel here is generally believed to be ancient Bactra. But I have some issues with this theory that I want to put to the test. The size and grandeur of this place simply takes your breath away. Wow, that's enormous. Yeah. Well, this is it. This is bulk. And this huge cauldron here is the Bali Hussar, the high wall. And inside it, well, history unfolded. When Alexander's army marched into Bactra in 329 BC, it was already a great city. And it became his center of operations in the battles to come. In almost every corner of this immense fortress, there's evidence of invasion. Well, I can't really be sure if this is a man or a woman, or indeed how old the skull is. But what it does illustrate is the amount of human remains all throughout Bulk. And the reason for that is that Bulk was sacked an unbelievable 800 times in its history. Bulk has been built up and wiped out so many times, we're walking across layer upon layer of human settlement. These walls are full of lots and lots of secrets. The problem is, people are looking for them all the time. They're treasure hunters and they're digging up this place. It's like a rabbit warren. They're looking for gold, they're looking for coins and rings to sell. As well as local looters, archaeologists have been digging up the past. But to date, none of the finds from this citadel can be traced back to the time of the Greeks or even the Persians. Bulk's 
citadel seems to have been founded much later, only reaching its peak during the golden age of Islam in the 8th century. More than a thousand years after the Greeks had come and gone. doubts about whether the ruins of Balk are really the remains of the Bactrian capital, Alexander made his base camp. So if not here, where is ancient Bactra? Tomorrow I want to look for clues in the modern centre of Balk. seems we're quite a hit in Bork Market. Every man and his dog wants to know what we're up to. Yeah, I'm David. 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 Uh, is the okay. film action? Uh, it's some action, yes. Well, according to all the histories, Bork has been here for a very, very long time. And for almost all of that time, it's been a centre of culture and a centre of trade. The streets here are full of beliefs and relics from the distant past. And this is the oldest mosque in Afghanistan. In fact, it's the oldest mosque in Central Asia. It dates from about 800. And what's so special about it is it has influences from Greek, from Buddhist and Persian. What it means is at that time, all of those influences were here. So this is a remarkable time capsule of religion and the belief in God. Balk has long been a meeting point for Eastern and Western culture. But at the 700-year-old Islamic madrasa or school, not everyone is so welcoming. These are Talibs, religious students of Islam. Maybe Taliban, maybe not. Either way, they don't look too thrilled to see us, so we give them and the grand old madrasa a miss. Since 2001 and the fall of the Taliban government, beards are no longer fashionable and the barber business is booming. For Afghans today, the Taliban are just one in a long line of invaders. 30 years ago, it would have been a Russian officer submitting to the barber's razor. In the Middle Ages, it could have been an Arab or a Mongol soldier. And in 329 BC, the invader was Alexander the Great. Through the years, Afghanistan has been attacked, destroyed and rebuilt by almost everyone. Like every town in this region, here in Balkh, history is for sale. Selling antiquities here is forbidden by law, but it's almost impossible to police. And Reza knows a guy who knows a guy that sometimes deals in antiques. What I'm looking for here is a clue to ancient Bactra at the time of the Greeks. Now these pieces are incredible. They're from lots of different periods. You've got really ancient icons like the griffin and the lion. It's, it's just this, this little collection on this handkerchief is just a treasure trove. But this is a piece that doesn't quite fit. 
Does he have any idea where where he found this, where it was from? Yes, he says from the Dalatabad. I mean, the family came from Dalatabad. This would be one of the rarest things you could find here. This is actually it's bronze, and etched into it is a story, and it's probably a really, really ancient story. Maybe, maybe ancient Persian, maybe even older. It's called a cylinder seal, and it's engraved with pictures that tell a story. So you basically roll this out, and it can be into mud, so it can be left in the sun, and then there is the remains of what, what was an amazingly carved chapter of either a legend or somebody's life. Now you find these all over this part of the world, and they're very old. If this was found out at Zadian, was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, north of Balkh. That, that, that means it's probably something like three and a half thousand BC, so five and a half thousand years old. It could be. So if you ever see one of these in an antique shop, take it to a museum. Yeah. <laughs> if the cylinder seal came from the north in Zadian, it points to the existence of a far more ancient civilization somewhere out on the dried up Bactra Delta, once a tributary of the Oxus River. Another clue is the vast network of ancient canals that lead north across the Delta. Much of the system now lies empty and broken, but in ancient times, they watered more than twice as much land as today. So canals like this have been watering bulk for a very, very long time. And today, if you follow them around through the countryside, what they lead you to is life. how cold it is, but then again, it is glaciated water, and it's not that far away from where it all comes from. And it's amazingly refreshing God, on a day like this. Irrigation here is everything. Without it, the land would rapidly become a desiccated dust bowl. If the ancient capital was located further north on the Bactra River Delta, then these canals must have watered it. My hope is they just might lead us to our goal. Like Alexander and his troops, we're heading for Zadian, a place rarely, if ever, visited by outsiders. This is a war zone. We need special permission to come out here. The road takes us deeper into remote areas of Afghanistan sympathetic to the Taliban. American and German armored units do patrol the region, but patrols are sporadic. This is not a place you want to get lost in. But Reza knows a Muslim cleric, or mullah, who told him of ancient ruins in the area. Finally, we reach Zadian. Reza introduces me to the mullah. He tells us about the history of his town and directs us towards its famous minaret. It's the oldest minaret in Afghanistan, he says. Yeah, oldest minaret in Afghanistan, as you can find, you cannot find any minaret more older than this minaret in, in, in Zadian. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We actually didn't come here to see this minaret, even though it's the oldest in Afghanistan. We've actually come here to use it as an observation tower. 
to something much, much older. It was built in the 13th century, and to have such an old minaret meant that this place, at least during the early Islamic period, must have been an important centre. It's a dry and lifeless place. It's hard to visualise how these lands could ever have supported farming, let alone a civilization. But in the distance, we can see the walls of a huge ancient structure. Well, what Ray has been telling me is incredible. Out beyond that citadel are mounds and mounds and mounds that the remains of cities. This whole area was a civilization at least two and a half thousand years old and probably older. But what's really incredible is that no one has been out there and explored it properly. It's a civilization waiting to be discovered. Today, this place is called Kafi Akala, Arabic for non-believers castle. But when Alexander and his army pushed their way north, it would have been a thriving Bactrian community. Not surprisingly, very few archaeologists have ever been out here. Since the late 1970s, the endless Afghan conflicts have made any meaningful exploration almost impossible. As we approach, I start to get a real sense of its size. These ramparts are more than 12 metres high. This was once a mighty fortified settlement with a large population. It's like a moonscape, isn't it? Well, it's about 42 degrees, 43 degrees. One of the problems about exploring places like this is these areas are full of landmines. And unless you're traveling with someone like Reza, who actually knows where to walk here, you've got to be really, really careful and just follow the paths. Zadian was ravaged by heavy fighting in the 1980s when Russian forces were in control of Afghanistan. This place became a stronghold of Afghan Mujahideen resistance. But as you can see, it's, it's an incredible fortress. And amazing that only a few years ago, it was used by the Afghans as a fortress to fight the Russians. Let's go down. Is this lost city the ancient capital? The massive defensive walls run through the desert for more than a hundred kilometers. But it appears the stronghold itself just isn't big enough to be the city of Bactra. It must have been another perimeter fortress town. Just like the fortress at Emesh Tepe, it would have been an important part of a defense system that spread for hundreds of kilometers across Bactria. But it's not what we've been looking for. This region is so vast, finding a fabled city that disappeared over 2,000 years ago was never going to be easy. We begin the trek back to civilization, deflated. It seems we've run out of options. But here in Afghanistan, news travels fast. A good mate of Reza's, named Maboub, has heard that we're interested in ancient sites and asked to meet us. Salam alaikum. Mahboub John? Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. 
It's the day before Navruz, the annual spring festival. And like all Afghans, Mahbub's family are having a traditional open house. What a beautiful house. Navruz has been celebrated here every year for millennia, commemorated by Bactrians, Persians, and after Alexander's conquest, even the ancient Greeks. Mahbub's family are very much modern Afghans, keeping one eye on the present and the other on the traditions of the past. That's fantastic. Wow. Yeah, it's 2,000 years ago, our people, they had to have seven fruits because seven fruit uh, represent a new life. And uh, we try, Afghan people, to continue this tradition. Recently, Mabub and his father were guides to a team of French archaeologists. So it's a very good place. They discovered a very special site deep in the mountains to the south. And he tells us that on the way to the French archaeological dig site, there's a mysterious system of tunnels that are yet to be deciphered. Could the city of Batra be in the mountains, a place where until recently no one had even thought to look? We've come 230 kilometers from the Afghan border through the city of Balkh and all the way to Zadian. Up until now, we've been searching the lowlands of the Bactra Delta, close to where it once met the Oxus River. But the dig site lies to the south in the rugged ranges known to Alexander the Great and the ancient Greeks as the Parapamesis. What's really exciting is that some ancient Greek reports say that Bactra lay at the foot of the Parapamesis. We eventually find the tunnels Mabub had told us about. Then it hits me. These aren't tunnels at all. They're part of an ancient system of aqueducts and canals. Like veins beside an artery, they follow the Bactra River all the way up into the mountains. Well, this place is an incredible labyrinth. These tunnels brought water probably thousands of years ago down onto the the plain where Bactria is today. But the sophistication of these tunnels is quite incredible. They're much more advanced than the, than the canals that people are using today. So it just shows you what that world was like. The only problem is these places are full of wasps and bees, and I don't like wasps and bees. I'm right next to my head. <laughs> when I mean sophisticated, just have a look at these. These are actually bricks, and they're kiln-fired. If I put my water on them, you'll see their color. Now, this is a whole detailed, amazingly structured foundation for these canals. And who knows how old these bricks are, but they're very sophisticated. It's at least 15 or 20 kilometers that these canals would have run. To build them would have taken thousands of man-hours. I mean, this was quite a civilization. But this leaves us with a lot of unanswered questions. When was this network of canals built? And what city did it supply? We're following the broken trail of ancient Bactrian canals, and they appear to lead all the way to the French dig site. It's another 15 kilometers deeper into the mountains, along the Shulgara Valley. This was once an ancient trade link across the mountains, and it was very likely one of the routes used by Alexander's army.
were now well outside the zone, regularly patrolled by coalition armoured units. The Taliban destroyed a convoy just a few kilometres south of here. And as luck would have it, it's exactly where the dig site's been located. This place is called Sheshmi Shafa, which means the healing spring. And it's a really, really old place. People have been living here for more than 20,000 years. So what's really incredible is that French archaeologists actually found a whole city temple complex here. It ranges right across the plain and then up into these mountains. They think it's the largest in Central Asia. We head on through the gorge. On the far side, the valley opens up into a wide and fertile wetland. To get a better view, Reza takes me to the ruins of a small frontier fort. It looks like a Garden of Eden. When Alexander arrived here, the river would have been dammed and these plains intensively irrigated, making it a rich oasis. Well, this is about as far as the Oxus civilization came south. These citadels guarded its rear. But what this place affords us is a view back in time, because further down that river, they found evidence of people living here 20,000 years ago. Until the French archaeologists began digging, what no one had realised was that the valley had supported much more than just a frontier fort. This was one of the first places excavated, believed to be a sacred site belonging to one of the world's oldest religions. This was a Zoroastrian fire temple. Well, this whole valley would have been full of fire towers. Right along the ridges, the whole place would have been lit up like a Christmas tree. But this shrine was special. This is the main Zoroastrian site for the whole valley. And can you imagine what this place would have been like two and a half thousand years ago? It would have been one of the greatest centers in Central Asia. On top of this altar would have burnt the eternal flame. So Astrians believe that fire represents the light of their one God. I believe that this is Zariaspa, a legendary center of the Zoroastrian religion. A religion that connected a succession of empires and millions of people all over the Near and Far East. This extraordinary city temple complex would have been a place of pilgrimage for hundreds of years, long before Alexander's time. If this is Zariaspa, it will amount to one of the greatest discoveries in recent archaeology. And I think that there are signs in this valley of an even greater prize. Sometimes something is so large that it remains hidden in plain sight. Down beside the river is what appears to be the foundations of an enormous fortified city. Many of the Greek reports in the time of Alexander describe Zariaspa as a twin city. And its twin was ancient Bactra. They tell us that the two cities lay at the foot of the Parapamesis Mountains and the Bactra River flowed past their walls. This place matches those accounts perfectly. I believe the cities the Greeks were describing are both right here. Not only is Zariaspa in this valley, but also ancient Bactra.
High on the left bank of the river was Zari Aspa. On the right bank was the city of Bactra. It would have been a mass of palaces, urban dwellings, and wide avenues. Easily comparable to the sophisticated cities of ancient Greece. Bactra was immense, home to tens of thousands of Bactrians and Persians. When Alexander arrived, it must have been a wondrous sight. This is truly a revelation. For more than 2,000 years, one of the Earth's greatest cities lay undetected and undisturbed in this sacred river valley. Discovering ancient Bactra is like finding the lost city of Atlantis. An archaeological and historical breakthrough of immeasurable significance. Here lies the extraordinary capital of the Oxus civilization. The mother of all cities. Laying claim to Bactra was a strategic triumph for Alexander the Great. Within two years, he would lead the Greeks all the way to the borders of the Indian subcontinent in a campaign that would become legend. Surrounded by a series of fortress towns like Emesh Tepe, Bactria's imposing defense system was a sign of its wealth and importance long before the arrival of Alexander. And despite the ravages of time, traces of this extraordinary ancient civilization survive today. Yeah!